64 crazy facts about the Beatles that everyone, including your mother, should know. George Harrison decided to write a song based on the first words he read upon opening a book. He then wrote, while my guitar gently weeps, after seeing the words gently weeps in a random book pulled from a shelf at his parents' house. The Animals frontman Eric Burden claimed he inspired the Beatles' line, I am the Eggman, after telling John Lennon about a will experience he had with his girlfriend involving a raw egg. Yoko Ono created an experimental film called Self-Portrait. It's a 42-minute shot of John Lennon's semi-erect p It was shown once at the Institute of Contemporary Arts in 1969 and has never been seen or released since. The film, that is. George Harrison's final letter was to Mike Myers, expressing his appreciation for the Austin Powers films. Myers got it the day Harrison died. The light in John Lennon's childhood bedroom is left on overnight on his birthday. Two years before he passed away from cancer, George Harrison was stabbed more than 40 times by an intruder who broke into his home and attacked him with a kitchen knife. In the 1960s, the Beatles wanted to make their own version of The Lord of the Rings, directed by Stanley Kubrick and starring John Lennon as Gollum and Paul McCartney as Frodo. However, Tolkien didn't give them the rights to his work. The Beatles album Abbey Road was originally going to be called Everest, but none of the Beatles wanted to fly to the Himalayas to take a photo, so they just called the album Abbey Road and took the photo on the zebra crossing outside the studio. A pine tree planted in 2004 in memory of George Harrison in a Los Angeles park died after being infested by Beatles. Ringo Starr suggested that the Beatles album that would eventually be titled Revolver should be titled After Geography, in reference to the recently released Rolling Stones album Aftermath. The Beatles song A Day in the Life has a high-pitched whistle, audible only to dogs. It was put in by Paul McCartney for his sheepdog to hear. In 1968, John Lennon, after taking a large amount of LSD, called an emergency meeting of the Beatles to inform them that he was, in fact, Jesus Christ reincarnated. George Harrison briefly quit the Beatles and John Lennon suggested replacing him with Eric Clapton, saying, he's just as good and not such a headache. John Lennon and Yoko Ono visited an astrologer who told them John would be shot and die on an island. So disturbed were they that they canceled their extended Greek Isles vacation. Ten years later, he died on Manhattan Island. Here Comes the Sun, the Beatles' most streamed song on Spotify, had zero contribution from John Lennon as he was recovering from a car crash. George Harrison wrote and sang it. The Beatles' song Savoy Truffle was about Eric Clapton, who at the time was having a candy addiction. George Harrison wrote the song as a warning to him. Ringo Starr nearly died from an operation on his intestinal tract, lost his house to a fire, and survived a major car crash all in a 13-month span. When the Beatles were performing Twist and Shout Live, John Lennon would change the lyrics to I'm p with gout and due to the screaming crowds, no one ever noticed. Before A Hard Day's Night was released in America, a United Artists executive requested to dub the voices of the Beatles with mid-Atlantic accents. McCartney angrily replied, Look, if we can understand a f cowboy talking Texan, they can understand us talking Scouse. Ringo Starr actually screams, I've got blisters on my fingers on Helter Skelter, not John Lennon. In 1964, when Bob Dylan first met the Beatles, he had misheard the lyrics to I Wanna Hold Your Hand as I Get High instead of I Can't Hide and showed up to meet them ready to smoke. He gave a joint to Ringo, who didn't realize he was supposed to pass it and smoke the whole thing himself. When the Beatles wrote the song with a little help from my friends, the first line ended with, What would you think if I sang out of tune? Would you throw ripe tomatoes at me? But Ringo changed it so that fans would not throw tomatoes at him should he perform it live. Jimi Hendrix leased a flat from Ringo Starr in 1966 and was evicted for throwing whitewash on the walls during an acid trip. John Lennon hated many of Paul McCartney's later compositions for the Beatles, calling it Paul's granny music sh the Beatles got rejected in an audition for a record company. Despite performing 15 songs in an hour during an audition for Decca Records, the label believed guitar groups were on the decline and couldn't foresee their future success in show business. Before the Fantastic Four from Liverpool called themselves the Beatles, they were called Johnny and the Moondogs. John Lennon's middle name was Winston, after former British Prime Minister Winston Churchill. All four members of the Beatles were still in their 20s when the band broke up, 
Not only is Paul McCartney credited with playing the celery on the Beach Boys song Vegetables, but you can also hear him chewing on a carrot in Super Furry Animals song Receptacle for the Respectable. Just listen for the crunch. In 1965, the Beatles were banned from performing a gig in Israel by the government because the band provoked aggression and sexual stimuli and had no artistic merit. In 1996, Ringo Starr went to Japan to take part in an ad for a brand of applesauce. Why? Because Ringo means apple in Japanese. When Paul McCartney went to Japan, he was arrested and put in jail for 10 days. But he was trying to bring half a pound of marijuana into the country. What does help mean in Japanese? The famous Rolling Stone cover shot of a naked John Lennon curled against Yoko Ono was taken by Annie Leibovitz at the same apartment complex. And on the same day, Lennon was fatally shot. At 2 minutes and 58 seconds in the song Hey Jude, you can hear Paul McCartney shout F hell as he screws up on the piano. The band thought it was funny enough to leave it in. George Harrison's song, Blue Jay Way, has led to the repeated theft of that street sign in Los Angeles. The song was written at a house on Blue Jay Way in the Hollywood Hills. Paul McCartney was mugged at knife point in Nigeria. The thieves made off with all the demo tapes for the album, Band on the Run, that he was down there to make. McCartney had to recreate the demos entirely from memory before the album could be remade. On August 13, 1966, in response to John Lennon's more popular than Jesus comment, a radio station in Texas held a burning of Beatles merchandise. The next day, the broadcast tower was struck by lightning, damaging much of their equipment and sending the news director to the hospital. In 1967, Paul McCartney forgot his passport when traveling to France to shoot a music video. He told the passport agents, you know who I am, so why do you need to see a photograph of me in a passport? And they let him through. Julian Lennon had to buy the letters he wrote to his father, John Lennon, at an auction because Yoko Ono wouldn't give them to him. When I'm 64 was one of the first songs Paul McCartney ever wrote in the 50s. By the time the Beatles recorded it in the late 60s, his voice had gotten deeper, so the vocals are sped up on the song to make him sound like a teenager. A student once sent John Lennon a letter stating his teacher was conducting a class analyzing the Beatles' songs. This act inspired the song, I Am the Walrus, as the whole purpose of the song, according to John, was to confuse, befuddle, and mess with the Beatles' experts. In the 1960s, radio stations refused to play Cher's first single, Ringo, I Love You, because they thought her low voice was a gay man singing a love song about the Beatles' drummer, Ringo Starr. When the Beatles first arrived in Hamburg in 1960, they lived in a cinema. Lennon recalled that they'd go to bed late and be woken up by the sound of the cinema show, and that they'd try to use the clean ladies' lavatory, but old German women would push past them. The Beatles' song, Michelle, was inspired by one of Paul's favorite strategies to pick up girls. To increase his chances with the ladies at parties, McCartney would dress in all black and sit in the corner with his guitar singing songs in made-up French. Lennon encouraged McCartney to make an actual song out of it, and Michelle was the result. The Beatles were the first band to display the rock and roll devil horns on an album, their Yellow Submarine album. This is believed to be one of the earliest instances this was shown in relation to rock and roll. The BBC band I Am The Walrus for its lyrics Pornographic Priestess and Let Your Knickers Down. George Harrison made it clear that they weren't going to be dissuaded from being edgy. The Beatles' last public performance was an impromptu concert on the rooftop of Apple Records in London on January 30th, 1969. This surprise performance famously concluded with the police shutting it down. The first and last photographs of John, Paul, George, and Ringo together were taken precisely to the day, seven years apart. The first was taken on August 22nd, 1962 at the Cavern Club, and the final photo was taken on August 22nd, 1969 at John and Yoko's home in Tittenhurst Park. George Harrison once threw up while staying in a room in Hamburg, and none of the Beatles wanted to clean it, so they just nicknamed it The Thing. Eventually, one of the employees cleaned it up after the smell got so bad, and the band held a funeral for it. The best-selling album of the first decade of the 21st century, 2000 to 2009, belongs to the Beatles, who broke up 30 years before the end of the 20th century. The album is the one collection. During the recording of Tomorrow Never Knows, John wanted to be hung by his feet and swung around the microphone to make his vocals to sound more like the Maharishi speaking from a mountaintop. On the day John Lennon was assassinated, he gave his would-be assassin, Mark Chapman, an autograph. A photographer even managed to capture the moment on film. 
John Lennon didn't choose to wear his iconic round glasses. When he was young, he was extremely self-aware. He wore contacts because he thought he looked bad with the glasses on. His iconic specs were given to him during the filming of How I Won the War in 1966. John was also a huge UFO nerd. He claimed to have seen a UFO from the balcony of his then-girlfriend's apartment in New York, which he described as a thing with ordinary electric light bulbs flashing on and off round the bottom, one non-blinking red light on top. When they were teenagers in their teddy boy days, John Paul and a group of friends would have group masturbation sessions, often ending anticlimactically when John would yell out, Winston Churchill, to break everyone's concentration. The mighty final chord of the Beatles' A Day in the Life was played by ten hands and three pianos simultaneously. The hands belonged to John, Paul, Ringo, George Martin, and Evan, the roadie. According to Paul McCartney, the U in Got to Get You Into My Life was marijuana. He called it his ode to pot. Yesterday was first released in 1965. By 1967, there were already 466 cover versions of the song. As of today, there are more than 2,000 versions. The B-52's song, Rock Lobster, inspired John Lennon to start making music again in 1980 because it reminded him of his wife Yoko's work. George Harrison lost his virginity in Hamburg, Germany, while sharing a room with the rest of the band. After he did the dirty, John, Paul, and Ringo all cheered from their bunk beds. John Lennon once forced David Bowie to eat a thousand-day-old egg cooked in horse urine by shoving it into his mouth while the pair were on vacation in Hong Kong. They were originally out looking for the local delicacy of monkey brains. George Harrison had two birthdays. He grew up believing he'd been born on February 25, 1943, shortly after midnight. But in his 30s, he discovered that he'd been born just before midnight on February 24, 1943. The Beatles' distinctive mop-top hairstyles were initially an accident. They had their hair styled in Hamburg, Germany by their friend and stylist, Astrid Kirchherr, who cut it in a unique way that became their trademark look. John Lennon's toilet from his Tittenhurst Park home was auctioned off in 2010. It fetched nearly $15,000, a testament to the enduring fascination with Beatles memorabilia. In 2011, a group of researchers using accepted statistical analysis methods found that listening to When I'm 64 by the Beatles reduced subjects' actual age by one and a half years.